Hello everyone and welcome to the MIC Student Experience Virtual Sessions. In our session uh, today we'll be focusing on primary school teaching and we have student representatives from the Bachelor of Education, the Bachelor of Education International and also the BN Education and Psychology. So if you do have any questions for our uh, students here today, you can use the chat function or the Q&A function. You can type in your question and uh, post it and I'll put it to them uh, later on in the session. Um, so we might start first of all by just introducing our uh, guests here today. So we've Mairead, uh, Steve and Cahill. Uh, Mairead is uh, representing the BA in Education Psychology. Um, Cahill is representing the Bachelor of Education and Stephen is representing the Bachelor of Education International. So um, I might just get everyone to introduce themselves just to just to start off. So uh, maybe Maria first, you want to just introduce yourself and maybe tell us a little about yourself. Hi everyone, welcome to the session. So my name is Maria Fallon and I'm from County Galway and I've just finished my final year of the B.Ed in Education and Psychology. Um, my plan this year is to go teaching in a primary school and possibly pursue the psychology in a few years time as well. That's great, Mairead. And uh, Steve and then you might like to just introduce yourself. Um, hi everyone, I'm Stephen. I am from uh, Clongeen, which is a small village in the south of County Wexford. And I um, just finished my first year in BA the International course. Thanks Stephen and finally Cahill then. Uh, hi my name is uh, Cahill, I'm from Limerick. Uh, I'm just finishing my third year in the in the Bachelor of Education. That's great, thanks a million Cahill. So I suppose maybe just first of all we might just um, maybe just chat to you all and maybe see why you, you decided to choose uh, your particular course and what was it about it that, um, that appealed to you. So um, I might start off maybe with Mairead, and Mairead, you chose to do the uh, BA in Education and Psychology, so maybe just tell us what, what was it that appealed to you and why you decided to, to choose that route? So originally uh, the BA in Education and Psychology wasn't on my CAO, so I actually started college um, in a big university studying science, but I left it after a few months because I, I didn't like it. And um, so I was in the situation where I didn't know what I wanted to do, um, but I did some work experience in a primary school and I really enjoyed it, but I was sort of afraid to commit to the one degree, I think. And then I found the B.Ed. in Education and Psychology in MIC and it really attracted me because of all the options I would have once I graduated. So it's quite unique in that it offers two different qualifications. So you have your qualification as a primary school teacher and then you have your qualification um, in psychology as well. So that's really what attracted me to the programme. Yeah, I, I suppose it's a great combination really, isn't it, Maria? Like the fact that you're a qualified primary school teacher at the end of the four years, recognised by the Teaching Council, and yet you also have your degree in psychology recognised by the Psychological Society. I suppose that's really, um, I suppose it's, it's just a very good course to have. You just have, I suppose you have more options then than just primary teaching. And, you know, would that be something you'd be thinking of, Maria? It was obviously that attracted you to the course. Would, in fact, you've made more options than primary teaching. Is that something you'd be thinking about in the future, maybe? Yes, it's definitely something I'm considering. And because the degree is accredited by the Psychological Society of Ireland, I can go straight into a psychology master's. Whereas if it wasn't uh, accredited, I'd have to do a, an extra year conversion course. So that's definitely a huge advantage of having the degree as well. Yeah, and I think I suppose that accreditation, as you said, it just saves you time and um, obviously the cost of having to go do further uh, study to get that accreditation as well. So I think it's it's a great one to, to do. Um, we might move on to, to Stephen then. So Stephen, you're in first year on the we're supposed to relatively new Bachelor of Education International programme. So you might tell us, Stephen, how um, I suppose the programme came on your radar and maybe you know why you chose to do it or was primary teaching always on your agenda or, or you know what, what way did you come at it? Well um, I was always wanting to do a primary teaching since I was about 10 or 11 but uh, was it, uh, Christmas of six six years the open day for Mary Isla came, da came down and passed her um, school and there was a talk and was talking about the BA course first and then they started mentioning the BA International so I thought this is this kind of suits me like it, 
teas going on about different um, international uh, courses and stuff um, where you're learning about different cultures and different different teaching styles like in South America or in uh, US, US or Australia or whatever. I remember this first um, kind of international talk that we had, we won every month, was about um, teaching in New Mexico and how that is so difficult because of the different class systems that they have over there with, uh, <clears throat> with the teaching and the kind of the whites are seen as best as the Mexicans and such uh, in the south of the US. So it was quite interesting to learn about it and kind of really spark an interest in it. Yeah, like that sounds fascinating. I suppose that whole international aspect and the fact you can kind of get an insight into I suppose what primary teaching is like in other countries outside of Ireland, like you're saying in maybe Mexico or the United States. Um, you mentioned, Stephen, obviously that you, you came to an open day uh, to Mary Immaculate, um, I think when you were in fifth or sixth year. I suppose we'd always advise students to attend an open day. Was, it, was that a big um, part of uh, your decision in, in coming to Mary Immaculate? Yeah, it was always, it was, always um, it was either going to be Mary Macklin or Pat's, but so the open day kind of swayed me more towards MIC, especially with the course, the international course. Like, it, um, the open day kind of opened my eyes to it as such. And it's, it was good for me. And so I know others um, in my year kind of got the same insight whatever caused the open. Yeah, no, I think I'd always advise students to go to the Open Day. It does make a big difference. Um, so we might move on to Cahal next. Um, so Cahal, you might tell us maybe about your experience and, and maybe how you ended up in Mary Immaculate on the Bachelor of Education program. Uh, so uh, while I was in like when I was in secondary school, I, a good few of my teachers always said that um, I would be quite a good teacher. Um, I like to kind of help people in throw class and stuff. So they all. I, Good few teachers had said that I would be. So that kind of put teaching on my radar to start. And then with having Mary I on my doorstep because I'm from Limerick originally, um, it was just such a an easy option for me to choose was to go into Mary I to start the Bachelor of Education. And I've never looked back, I've loved it ever since. Yeah, well I suppose when you're in Limerick as well, you probably knew a bit about the place anyway, Carl, so I'm sure it influenced your decision. Um, I might go back to, to Mairead now for the next question. Um, a lot of um, students when they're starting off in college, I suppose they can find it difficult maybe to make that transition from secondary school to third level. And obviously orientation plays a, plays a big role, um, I suppose just in acclimatising uh, students to third level and just getting to know where all the different services and you know uh, facilities are. Um, how did you find orientation Mairead? Was it, was it something that played a big part in just making that transition a little bit easier when you started off that first week or two in college. Yeah, so I would have had my orientation in 2017 and I actually stumbled upon a video of it on YouTube recently and I found myself in it and the group of people I was with and they're actually some of the friends that I've kept until this day. So the people I met that very first week are still my closest friends. So I definitely recommend attending and because it's a good way of getting to know people in your course, in your accommodation, from other courses and even getting to meet lecturers as well is really important and it's just a good way to start your college experience and um, I remember one day we had like a little Kaylee that was our our orientation event and that's when sort of people's personalities started coming out and we all really started getting uh, started getting to know each other so yeah I definitely recommend attending. Yeah and it's, it's, it's funny Mairead a lot of people come back and say often the people they meet at orientation or even in the first lecture they often end up being their their main friends or buddies for the, for the next couple of years which is kind of uh, which is very interesting. Um, maybe Stephen next I suppose Stephen you I suppose you came in in a year when I suppose COVID-19 really kind of derailed a lot of people's plans and I suppose a lot of, a lot of things were on were online um, did you find that a little bit challenging maybe with orientation online or I suppose how did the college um, you know try to to make it as easy as possible for students? Well um, I actually got quite lucky that the week that orientation was on we were able to go down to campus because the week after that we were meant to start, I think it was the week after we were meant to start 
and then the government said no, shut it all down. So like I was able, I was able to go down and I was able to visit the campus for the first time. It's the only time, I, like, second time I've ever been on the campus, and it's the only time since I've been on. It. So I was lucky enough in that way. But I was, I also met a couple of fellas that uh, I have kept in touch with, sort of they were on my course, whatever. So I've been able to contact them when the time calls, or whatever, to get a little bit of advice or help, or whatever. Same with them. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's been a slightly different experience for you, you Stephen Ryan. I suppose the great at least that you managed to get on campus for 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 orientation anyway. Um, and hopefully, look, we'll probably know in the, in the coming months anyway. Hopefully, the whatever way the academic um, outlook will be next September, you know, we'll probably be notified by the government and the Department of Education in the next uh, month or two, and we'll know a little bit more anyway. Um, for Cahill. Uh, what were your memories of orientation, Cahill? I suppose it's, you know, was it something that uh, helped you ease your way into college in, in Mary Immaculate? Yeah, definitely. Um, my orientation would have been back in 2018. Um, I can still remember going in the first day into the um, Calton building uh, where, you, where you start your orientation and the guy who was sitting beside me is still one of my, uh, one of my close friends from college at the moment. He's only in, say, one class ahead of me say 3A and 3B, he's in 3B, I'm in 3A. Um, he was literally sitting beside me on the very first day. We've been very, very good friends ever since. And so I know how important the orientation is. I was involved with the orientation this year for the first year at the Students' Union. And like, it's the only opportunity they've had to be on campus so far. So it's very, very important time. Yeah, I think that it's, I guess, good to hear another story of someone that met a, met a good friend at, at orientation. Um, and I suppose leading on to that, I mean, we might put this to Mairead uh, first. Um, I suppose leading on from that, I suppose, you know, Mary Michael College, I suppose the lecturers and the staff and even the students I suppose, have a good reputation for being friendly and for being very open and very welcoming. Um, did you find that when you started, uh, Mairead, like were, were your fellow students friendly or, you know, was it easy to make friends and kind of settle in? Yes, in general, the population in Mary I are, are very friendly and because it's such a small college as well, it makes it easier to make friends and there's a great sense of community. And even I have my experience in a bigger university and I definitely found that it was just so big. I was very overwhelmed. But when I came to Mary I, I didn't find that at all. It was very easy to get to know people and um, through clubs and societies. So I was involved with the dance stock in Mary I. Um, and then through other things like the Students' Union, I got involved in that too. So yes, in general, um, the, the college is very, very friendly. Even now at this stage, at the end of my degree, I could say I'd walk through the campus and it's nearly impossible not to meet someone you know and they just stop you for a chat. Uh, so that's definitely a huge advantage of, of Mary I. Yeah, yeah good, good, to, good to hear, uh, Mairead. And maybe Stephen, this was your experience is slightly slightly different, Stephen, in that you're you know you're only in first year this year and with the whole COVID situation. Um, you mentioned, I suppose, that you set in contact with you know some of your your classmates, maybe um, you know via social media or, or different um, online platforms. You know, was there different ways or different, I suppose, methods to kind of you know get to know people or um, you know make contact with others in in your class? Yeah, well, the first uh, day of lectures, and um, we had a kind of a get to know session um, with our, our class group. And the international put in a class group 1A, so we were um, getting to know everyone there. So we were able to get each other Snapchat details and we made a Snapchat group and we've been in contact with each other ever since, like we popping every single day kind of with different stuff, especially now. With this, I'm trying to start to finish my placement, but there's a couple, there's a few others still on their placement just as a whole of evidence. There had to be um, accommodation at different dates or whatever, so we managed to maintain uh, contact and all that. Which, uh, I remember the first uh, big blue button session we had, uh, I think it was uh, language and literacy. Uh, we were split up into the breakout rooms and I was just sitting there, silence. <laughs> Also, because we didn't know each other, like we just kind of, it was everyone was afraid to say the first thing, but first uh, sentence ever. But like two or three weeks in, we were chatting about each other, not know about it honest at all. Yeah, as well as it's good to notice, you know, 
that you did start to, to get to know one another, I suppose, at least uh, there was that online facility and different things like Big Blue Button or, or other ways of getting to know people. Um, and what about you, Carl? I suppose maybe being from Limerick, you might have had some of your um, the schoolmates from secondary school might have been coming to Mary Immaculate as well. Maybe did that make it a little bit easier to, to adapt to third level? Yeah, the, from my own school, I went to quite a big school in Limerick. Uh, so there's, I think there's about five or six of us who are in the BA in Mary at the moment, and then a few who are doing, say, the arts degree or the other degrees. Um, so that made it that made it kind of small but easier. But uh, say a lot of my school friends I wouldn't be very close to at the moment. It's all the friends that I met kind of in orientation week. Um, I don't think I've ever met anyone from Mary who isn't friendly, who isn't, who won't chat chat away at you if you start a conversation with them. Um, everyone's just so friendly, and it's just, it's like Mar like Mary had said, it's like a little community. Everyone will chat away to everyone else. You, you'll always there's always someone you're going to meet that you'll know inside Mary. Yeah, I think that that's great to hear, Carl. Um, we might go to Mairead next, and uh, Mairead, I think Stephen mentioned obviously school placement there. Uh, a few moments ago, and obviously as part of the, um, you know, the BN Education Psychology, I think you might be out on professional placement as well for the psychology part of it. Um, would you tell us a little bit about, um, I suppose, school placement, professional placement, and you know what it is, what it, what it entails, and maybe your own experiences of it? Yeah, so I've completed all of my school placements now at this stage. Uh, so in first year we had um, our middle school placement, so I was in a fourth class. And second year, I was in with the third class. In third year, we were supposed to have our psychology placement, but sadly, because of COVID, that has to be cancelled. And um, but I was supposed to be travelling abroad and teaching in India as part of that placement. And um, so hopefully now with this incoming group, they'll be able to experience something like that. And then this year, I had my final extended placement, which was 12 weeks long, and I was in with senior infants. Uh, it obviously had to be changed because of COVID, but MIC responded really well. Um, so everything was pass fail in the end and even though we couldn't have in-person inspections we still had inspections over the computer over Microsoft Teams so it was great that we still had that experience and that we were still able to get out into the classroom as well even despite Covid and despite the pandemic and that's the, one of the things I love about this course as well that it's not just academic you're not just in the books all the time doing assignments you actually do get to go out into the community um, and into the schools and actually learn learn that way and learn through experience. Yeah, it's, I suppose it's good to hear that at least the managed uh, college managed to adapt uh, to COVID circumstances. And and just leading on from that, Maria, like did you find or, or how did you find that balance? I suppose between maybe managing the psychology side of things and your education lectures was that was that a challenge or, or was it something that was kind of a natural combination? It was it was definitely a challenge. I'm not going to lie because um, the two the two um, degrees or the two different disciplines they're obviously different. And with the psychology you're in with the BA students and with the education you're in with BEDs. But I have to say there are actually a lot of lecturers in MIC that we had who actually have experienced the degree, so they knew what we were going through, and we could always contact them if you know we were ever struggling with anything. Um, but as well, the two disciplines do really complement each other. So I could bring my psychology into the classroom, uh, which was great as well. And equally for my psychology dissertation, which you do at the end of fourth year, um, I could bring what I've learned from education into that as well. So they do really complement each other. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah they, it is challenging sometimes to balance it, but it's definitely doable and the support is definitely there. That's, that's good to hear. And um, Stephen, I suppose, obviously you were in first year this year and, you know, it was a, a difficult year uh, with, with, with COVID, but did you manage to get out on, on school placement at all? Uh, yeah, I managed to get out last last two weeks. I was in the, my local primary school with school placement, so we were we all managed to get out. So it was originally meant to be um, the two weeks sleep before the Easter break. But because of COVID, it was all switched around. So we ended up doing our Grail Talks that time and Grail Talk Online as it was that time. And we did our school placements in around this time. Like I said, it could be this two weeks or next two weeks, and just depending on how schools can fit you in with uh, COVID and all that. So it was, um, it was a different, it was a ex different experience now compared to sitting in front of a screen and just. Kind of uh, going through uh, different stuff like 
you're actually yeah. Yeah. given the practical way to teach the practical side of the course, which is uh, good, good fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure, sure it was kind of a different experience. And Cahal, I think you were mentioning offline, I suppose you've probably done school placement in schools and maybe you've done a bit now this year with COVID, um, you know, via online platforms as well. So was it a kind of a, what was your school placement experience like? Yeah, so being in uh, third year now, I've got two of my school placements done. Uh, one of them was in first year. Uh, that was say a couple of weeks in first year where I was teaching a, a second class in first year. And this year then we had placement. It was supposed to be say, we normally do it in second year, but due to the COVID pandemic last year and schools being closed, uh, Mary and I were able to kind of reorganize it and have it set that we done this year. So we still got to do our placement. We didn't get, we didn't miss out on it. And um, I was in a school for four, four weeks this year uh, teaching a first class and um, you could really see the difference between say when I was in first year and currently now uh, the changes that have been brought into schools um, say with COVID, the COVID protocols and stuff uh, but the college were very very helpful all the way through uh, they, they support us through everything they gave us loads of resources uh, to help us with every aspect of the placement and as Stephen was saying I'm still I'm currently doing my grad placement now my second grad placement that we do in, in Mary I. OK, and is, and uh, Carl, did, did you find, I suppose, over the, over the course thus far, like getting that balance, I suppose, between uh, lectures on campus or obviously online this year and then being in a school as well, doing your school place, placement? Um, how do you find that balance? Like, you know, it, was it was it difficult or, or was it challenging or, or how did you manage it? Um, I feel like the balance is, is very, very good. Uh, you get to learn all the, say, theory behind the teaching and everything while you're on your lectures and then you always get a quite a big nice chunk of time that you get to go to a classroom to observe a teacher and then to actually teach yourself so you get to put the theory into practice and um, school placement can be challenging uh, there's quite a lot of preparation and so like say planning and stuff that goes into it but it's so worthwhile and it's so much fun once you actually get out into a classroom you actually get to teach the kids you get to meet the kids you you grow, you get a quite a good relationship with even for the couple of weeks. You the relationship between yourself and the children in the class really does grow. Yeah, I, I think that's a great part of the course. The kind of the the idea that you can put the the theory into practice almost. You know what you're learning in your lectures, and you, there's that practical element which is you know many courses, uh, many programs wouldn't have. I think that's a great experience. Um, to Mairead next, uh, Mairead, uh, both Stephen and Carl mentioned the Gwaeltach placement there. Um, in the last minute or so. Um, I suppose maybe tell us your own memories of, of the Gwaeltag placement. Um, you know, how did you find it? Um, you know, basically just what it's all about, maybe for, for prospective students, they mightn't really understand what what the whole thing is about. You might uh, maybe just tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so over the course of the four year degree, there are two different Gwaeltag placements. So one at the end of first year and one at the end of third year. And I have to say they were one of my favourite parts of the degree. And um, so in first year, I went to Connemara for two weeks and in third year, we were all in Dingle um, at around January time. And it was just uh, lo really, it was just very fun um, to get the whole year together um, down in Kerry. We were learning Irish every day, so we had our classes in the morning and then in the evenings you could go out and socialise, uh, learn more about the Gwaeltas community, about the culture. Um, so yeah, that was definitely a unique experience. It's not something you get usually from a college degree to be able to go down to the Goyles up there, down to Kerry or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was definitely one of the most enjoyable parts of the degree and, I, and my Irish definitely improved as well. So that was great. Yeah, it's just good to hear. And I suppose the whole purpose really is just to improve your, your spoken or your oral Irish. Um, Stephen, you mentioned the Goyles placement there and you were, I suppose you were doing it uh, how how are you do are you doing it online now at the moment, Stephen? Or what exactly? How is it working? Um, we had it online um, for two, like two weeks leading up to the Easter break, and basically we had like we had class in the morning, and then sometimes we had activities in the afternoon, whether it be um, question, questions or something like that, or that, or, uh, must, like different stuff to kind of improve our Irish and such. But uh, it, was, it was a different experience, especially um, 
it was different from the normal college day because you're changing it up, you were doing uh, just speaking in Irish all the time, you weren't just uh, staring at the screen, listening to lectures, you're actually involved in it, you were constantly talking, constantly asking questions and such, compared to when you'd be uh, doing lectures where you'd be, you'd be asking questions, but you wouldn't actually get to fit, uh, use your vo vocally asking, you're kind of typing them as such, so it's different that way. Yeah, and look, hopefully, Stephen, for your next placement, maybe in third year, you'll be able to get out um, and actually get to 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 the Gwelta, whether it's in Kerry or Galway or wherever. Um, Cahal, what was your experience of the Gwelta placement? I suppose, would it be fair to say there's a great social side to it as well? Yeah, so when I was in first year, I was lucky enough to actually get to go to the Gwelta for the two weeks. So I um, went down to Dingle uh, for my two week placement in first year. Um, it's a fantastic time. Your your Irish improves so so much while you're there. You've got classes in the morning time. You've got other activities in the evening time that are say ask Gaelic as well. But then you also have a great there's a great social aspect to it too. I made a good I made a lot of friends from being down in the Gaelic because you get to meet up with people in you get to meet up with people you might normally meet with because in Mary like say for the BA the BA and um, there's lots of different classes. So like you might not necessarily see everyone every day. When you're in the Great Touch, you got to meet new people. You were with them for two weeks, so a great friendships formed there too. Yeah, that, that's that's good to know. I suppose following on from that, and I might might put this to you, Maraid, because you're you've obviously finished the program now. I suppose a lot of prospective students are, you know, we often get asked at career fairs or open days. They're often a bit worried about the the standard of Irish that they'd need, or you know, they'd be a bit worried with their with their spoken Irish be up to the level uh, required. Um, Maybe tell us a little bit about your own experiences, uh, maybe with Irish and um, maybe look, is, is it something, you know, probably it might be a bit, some students get over anxious when thinking about it and it's probably, it's probably unnecessary really, is it Mairead? Yeah, I wouldn't be, be worried about it. I mean, there's a broad range of experience with the Irish language within the degree itself. And um, so, for example, we have our Moon and Nguelga uh, lectures, which help you how to teach Irish in the classroom. But then we also have Changa and Nguelga um, lectures as well. So there's that good mix. You get to learn how to teach it, but you also have the opportunity to improve your own Irish as well. And then with the two Gwelta placements, there's huge opportunity to actually improve your spoken language or your spoken Irish and your written Irish. So I wouldn't be worried about it. I mean, there's different standard across the degree. And I wouldn't let it hold you back either because there's huge opportunity to improve your Irish over the four years. Yeah, I think that, I think that's good advice, um, uh, Mairead. And I suppose another thing we often get asked, and I might put this to Cahill because um, I suppose you're in charge, you know, Cahill, you've, you've seen a lot of the course, a lot of people interested in primary teaching, they often, you know, they might put in questions about uh, specialisms or electives. Um, you might just explain what exactly they are and, and how that part of the of the program works, and maybe what you what you studied yourself. Yeah, so once you go into second year, and you start to uh, do art selectives, what they call, uh, they're modules that are coming from the arts department in Mary I, uh, so they can range from maths to French to German. Uh, there's a very long list of different ones you can do, and um, those are kind of ones you kind of you kind of study them just to kind of give you that little bit extra kind of knowledge. In different aspects. So I myself, I done a math art selective. Um, I quite liked maths when I was in school, so I thought it was a good one for me to choose. I know a lot of my friends have done, say, German or French or Irish, and that's helped them to improve their language skills in those languages. And then when you're coming to the end of your second year, you just you pick your education electives. Uh, these education electives are, say, more detailed versions of certain aspects of the course. So. You can do uh, you can do P one in PE, so you you go and you get more um, modules in PE. Normally you get two, so now we have maybe I think it's an extra four that kind of gives you more in-depth uh, knowledge of PE and teaching of PE. There's one in uh, SEN, so special educational needs. It kind of helps you to understand uh, in more in depth the say different aspects of SEN. Um, there's a list the length of your arm of different electives that you can choose in both education and in arts. Um, I again chose maths education for my own personal specialism because um, I quite, I'm quite passionate about teaching maths. I enjoy teaching maths um, and it's a subject that I quite enjoy myself. Um, 
I know that it's slightly different for the Vieden site that they don't um, get the same range of choice. Uh, I'm not sure how it works for the international uh, Vied. I, I'm not, I'm not, don't know too much about it. Okay, no, that's just a, a lot of detail there, Carl. Thanks a million. Um, we have a few questions, so um, we might just uh, put them to you. Uh, first one, I might put this to Stephen. Um, one of our listeners, Stephen, did just want to know what I suppose the average number of hours per week is on the uh, on the Bachelor of Education uh, program. Um, obviously, they'll be saying for the Bachelor of Education International as well. So I, I know it's online this year, but you might give a rough idea. And um, generally, I think you have about well, five. Uh, I think it was six or seven lectures a day. Uh, we had now. I know this semester was quite compressed. We uh, we all had only three days or eight lectures just because of um, we were meant to do uh, school play, uh, school observation on the Monday and the Friday was uh, we'd one or two lectures. But uh, generally, you'd have six, five to seven lectures in a day, which could be about an hour long. So you would be uh, five or six hours kind of uh, doing different lectures. And then you have the time to go to, uh, assume on campus, you can go to the library, or you can go to your the cafeteria or whatever. At home, you can do a bit of work on your uh, different assignments that you have to do or whatever. So you can spend as long as you want after the lectures, doing whatever you want kind of thing. So it's, uh, generally it's five to seven hours a day of lectures and then you're to go kind of thing. Thanks. The next question then is a, is a BA in psychology question. So, Marie, I might put it to you. Um, this listener wants to know uh, Is the BA in psychology degree much harder? And are there many extra hours per week because um, obviously you have the psychology as well? So, there are actually no extra hours. The, the credits for both courses, the BA and the BA in psychology, are exactly the same and that's due to the design of the degree. It's been done really, uh, really cleverly. And um, so there's a lot of overlap. We'd have a lot of educational psychology modules, so that would help uh, with the hours as well. And as Cahill alluded to, uh, because we have the psychology, we don't need to do the electives, the, the educational electives or the art electives. So the hours are exactly the same um, and the course has been designed in a really smart and efficient way. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say it's more challenging. I'd say both degrees have their own challenges. Um, it's just different. That's the only thing. And you just have that extra experience with the psychology as well. It's a great answer, Mairead. Um, next question is from uh, someone who wants to know, is the college um, hoping to reopen fully in September 21 pending COVID restrictions? I might just answer that myself. Um, obviously, we are, I suppose we're awaiting details from the Department of Education and government and hopefully in some time in June, uh, we'll get that information and we'll be able to, to make a um, and make a decision um, on that. But yes, hopefully we're, we're hoping to have as much on campus as possible for September, but um, it's all pending uh, COVID restrictions. So next question then, I might put this to Cahill. And Cahill, it's, it's actually a, a Gwaeltaq placement question. This person wants to know, uh, do you teach there or is it you go to the Gwaeltaq just for the Irish experience? Yeah, so how the graduate works is you go down for two weeks, uh, very similar to say if you went to the graduate when you were in secondary school. Uh, you go down for two weeks, you stay with a band on tea and you have class every morning. You don't teach down there, it's your being taught, it's to improve your skills in Irish. So I'm on my, in my online one at the moment, so we've got classes from half nine to eleven, we have a break, then we have another classes from half eleven to one. That's kind of a similar way of how it would work when you're actually down there as well. Uh, the class times are quite similar. But yeah, no, you don't teach, you're not teaching in the grad talk, you're the one being taught. It's there to help you improve your standard of Irish. And it just, just kind of helps you along. Okay, thanks a million, Carl. Um, next question then is basically someone looking about alternative routes into, into primary teaching, really. Um, I might just answer it. Um, you know, they're wondering if they did the arts course or, you know, maybe early childhood care. So in Mary Mackinac, we do have um, a two year postgraduate program called the Professional Masters of Education. So basically what you need is you need a level eight degree. Um, there's an oral Irish, there's an oral Irish exam and there's an interview. 
and there's entry requirements. And if you get through all that, get on that postgraduate program, it's two years and you're fully qualified. So it's for people who already have a level eight degree and who want to become a primary school teacher. It doesn't matter what your degree is in. Um, lots of people do the arts degree or early child care, Mary Mackinac, and they would go on and try apply for that. So that might be an option. Um, next question then is, uh, I might put this one to uh, Stephen. So Stephen, uh, this person wants to know, so what is typically required of you in first year school placement? So you might just give your own experiences even just from this year. Uh, generally, it's kind of just to basically kind of get a basic knowledge of um, lesson planning and how to plan your lessons and um, how to pace your lessons so that they're not, you're not starting with something that's real simple, then jumping into something that's real complex. Um, and it's all basically it's been trying to get basic foundations of uh, teaching, like uh, classroom management, how to um, go about helping students that are struggling, how to um, basically maintain control of the class and also teach the class at the same time. It's uh, what my uh, tutor said, you're basic, you're trying to survive us. You, the first one is you're trying to survive and then the rest is just, you know, and then the rest is kind of you're developing your, all the skills that you uh, gained the basic knowledge of in your first year. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Stephen. And there's, there's a follow on question there, Stephen. I think you did your first year school placement in your local primary school, but this person wants to know, um, do they all have to be completed in your local primary school? And I presume that's not the case, is it? No, no. I did, did, Normally, um, the first the first year school placement is partnered, so you're sent out to a school. I think it's in the Limerick area that you're sent out to schools in, uh, or wherever they can get you a place. And um, you and someone else from your course, so it could be with so you could be like I I'm in one A, so it could be with someone in seven B or whatever. Doesn't matter what um, group you're with, so you're sent off there. But this year, because of COVID, you're you you're asked to source your own placement, so. I was lucky enough, I got into my own primary school, but I know for others who were travelling an hour every morning to get to their placement level. Just, it was literally wherever you could get into that you got your placement. Okay, and there's just one more follow on question there, Stephen, I'll put it to you as well. One of our listeners wants to know, on average, how long would you spend in first year on assignments and studying in a week? So you can give your own estimate there, Stephen, or you can... Um, she's on average, I probably... It's hard, it's hard enough because uh, so, some of the uh, assignments you would fly through, like if you love a, a particular part, but you do it, you go out and you do it a day or two. But uh, what is it? It's just a real slow to get through. So it can be anywhere between 10 to 15 hours a week kind of thing. You'd be spending one or two hours a day just trying to get through different assignments or studying or whatever. So it's, it's really up to you how long you want to spend on us. Okay, we have one or two more questions. So our next one, we might put it to Cahill. Uh, Cahill, one of our listeners wants to know how are the placements uh, sorted by the college or the students themselves? So you might give your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, so uh, normally your first year placement is sourced by the college. As uh, Stephen was saying, it's normally a paired placement. So you have a partner. So two of you are sent out to the one class. So when I was in first year, another girl from my class was part, we were partnered together. So we both got sent out to one school. Then when you're in second year and your final year, fourth year, uh, they're self-sourced. So you have to find them yourself. Um, they've got their certain criteria about the classes, but you can go to any school anywhere really that you can get a place in. Okay, and um, we have a psychology one, I might put it to Mairead. Uh, Mairead, uh, this person wants to know, um, are the electives restricted for the psychology course? Yeah, so because we have the psychology already, we don't do electives, uh, but instead we have different mod modules in cognitive psychology, social psychology, educational psychology, and bi biological psychology. There's so many different um, modules that you will take over the four years of the degree. So then, yeah, so there's no electives then that you have to do because we have all those um, different modules in psychology. Okay, uh, final question or two as our time is nearly up. Uh, one person wants to know, should I improve my Irish in the summer in order to be ready, ready for college level Irish? 
I suppose I'll answer that. Yeah, I suppose you should try. Anyway, that would be no harm at all if you wanted to go to the Guelta or just join an Irish society, something like that. And um, another person is wondering: Are these sessions being recorded? Yes, they are. We'll um, they'll be available on our website uh, in due course after this. And uh, Cahal, I might put this one to you then. Um, what determines which Guelta region you go? I presume it's a matter of choice, is it, Cahal? Yeah, it's completely up to yourself. Um, so when you're when you're you're told the dates that you're going to the Guelta, and then each Guelta region around the country will have the set dates for Mary I. Uh, so Dingle has it. Uh, I know Connemara has it. Um, I think there's one in like Donegal or somewhere that sometimes runs if there's enough people that want to go to it. Uh, but the two main ones there are normally Connemara and Dingley. It's up to your own choice which you're going to want to go to. Okay, that's great. Um, look, time is time is cut up, but as um, I'd like to thank Maraid, Cahill, and Stephen for um, you know giving a great insight into their respective courses and um, student life, I suppose, at, at Mary Immaculate College. Um, this session was recorded, so if you do want to watch it back or you want to recommend it to friends or colleagues, it will be available on our website www.mic.ie forward slash CEO. And if you do have further questions, you know, about any of the courses about the college, you can always go to our website on all of our program pages. There's a Q&A facility called Pubble. Type in your question, send it off and someone like myself who works in the college will get back to you. So just a final thank you again to Kaha, Stephen and Maraid. Uh, that brings this session now to a close.